This week, NASA released these posters seeking recruits for a mission to Mars. The images hark back to the space agency's golden age, but look forward to the new frontier. They call for teachers, technicians, surveyors, and even farmers to take part in the eventual exploration of the Red Planet. Such posters mean more today than they might have even just a few years ago because there's a new space race. It could be titled Destination Mars. NASA, along with private companies, are planning expeditions to the fourth planet from the sun. But these astronaut explorers will all face the same problem once they get there. How do they grow food? So U.S. scientists went to the bone-dry deserts of South America to cook up a solution. And Mark Albert is here after traveling nearly 4,000 miles for this story. Not exactly deep space, Mark, but it's good enough. It's a story you'll only see on CBS this morning, Saturday. Good morning, Mark. Good morning. And this is what mission accomplished would look like space spuds. Potatoes played a starring role in one recent Hollywood film set on Mars, but it turns out growing potatoes on another planet may be far from science fiction. This vast plain, dotted with dunes molded by centuries of unforgiving wind and little rain, is Mars on Earth. The Pampas de la Hoya Desert in southern Peru is harsh and arid, as close as it gets on our blue planet to the red one next door. These scientists are trying to unearth the secret recipe for farming on Mars, hauling two tons of sun-baked soil to their cosmic kitchen, a trip that takes two days. So you brought back a lot of dirt from the desert. This dirt is the main ingredient in an audacious and groundbreaking test taking place in Lima, Peru. This is the very first experiments that we're doing, so uh, we don't really know how it's going to work out. But and Jan Kruse is essentially the head chef for the project at the International Potato Center. Yes, potato. Can you grow potatoes on a planet that died two billion years ago? Yes. <laughs> I got to figure out a way to grow three years worth of food here on a planet where nothing grows. Matt Damon sure pulled it off in the 2015 movie The Martian. After accidentally being stranded and with dwindling supplies, Damon's character, a botanist, figures out so. how to grow potatoes on Mars. In your face, Neil Armstrong. They don't have a problem growing. Croza thinks potatoes have the right stuff to grow on the inhospitable Martian surface. Why did you think potatoes, of all things, would be a good fit? Well, you know, uh, potatoes are extremely versatile, extremely dry conditions, extremely cold conditions where it reaches minus 20 at night. Then you can grow it from, like here we're in the tropics, all the way to above the polar circle. You're saying potatoes are very resilient. Yes, they are very resilient. Uh, uh, so they gr you can grow them almost anywhere. Almost is the key word. And this is the, uh, the soil from La Jolla Desert. We don't have anything coming up here yet. Um, what does that mean? Um, well, it probably means that this soil is not ideal for potato. If you see the soil, it's, it's almost like a, it's, it's very dusty, it's almost like a cement. Uh, so when we, we water it, it becomes very compact. Um, and it might be a problem for the seeds to push through that, get oxygen in and things like that. When we visited this Lima greenhouse last month, potato seeds planted in ideal earthly soil had already sprouted. So they did well. But after two weeks, the seeds in the Martian-like dirt failed to break through. The scientists found the seeds didn't have room to breathe and the dirt was simply too salty. So they'll give the next batch of seeds more space by loosening up the soil, as well as trying other varieties of tubers that don't mind a little extra salt in their diet. So it's trial and error. It's trial and error. This is why we're doing these experiments, yes. Croza and his team have a lot of options. Their center is home to the world's largest gene bank of potatoes, 4,000 varieties of potatoes, and 8,000 types of sweet potatoes. Researchers have selected 65 for the Mars experiment. The laboratories are over there. Dr. Julio Valdiva Silva is an astrobiologist working here for NASA. He envisions domed, climate-controlled greenhouses on Mars, possibly even robots arriving before humans to begin planting. He says shipping potatoes or any long-term food supply with the astronauts is not viable. It's too expensive. It's, it's too, too expensive. One kilogram is about $10,000. In March, NASA tested its Mars rocket for the first time. The U.S. Space Agency has launched a program to land humans there in about 15 years. A confident Elon Musk thinks his SpaceX startup can do it in nearly half the time, 
with its new Falcon Heavy rocket. Should be able to launch people probably in 2024 with arrival in 2025. The entrepreneur told the Washington Post this month his ultimate goal is a self-sustaining city on Mars. And for that, Musk's Martians will need food. Later this summer, Croza and his team will also try growing potatoes in chambers that simulate the harsh Martian atmosphere. And if the potatoes can survive that, then they're really hardy oh, that, that, spuds. That, that, then they're hardy spuds, yeah. <laughs> Croza also shared a confession. When he was a kid, he really wanted to grow up to be an astronaut. He may not have reached the heavens, but his research could provide mana to millions here on Earth, where drought and climate change imperil so many. Uh, this isn't just about Mars. No, it's not just about Mars. We have more earthly uh, goals in mind to improve livelihoods, reduce hunger, uh, and uh, reduce malnutrition. So It seems like a big challenge. It is a big challenge, but it's not impossible. and. Uh, and it's with these big challenges that we, we achieve big things, right? The researchers know they're on the clock. On Tuesday, NASA will test what it calls the largest, most powerful booster rocket in the world in the Utah desert. It will eventually carry astronauts and perhaps those hardy potato seeds to Mars. Along with SpaceX, other Mars projects are in the works from Blue Origin, Virgin Galactic, and Mars One. Fascinating, just fascinating. Mm -hmm. If they can pull this off, that's going to be one super sturdy spud. Uh, absolutely. They're going to try some that are natural and some that have been improved in the lab to see which ones are more hardy and which ones can survive the atmosphere. Is taste a factor at all? Uh, well, I think they want it to taste good, but that's not their top priority, I don't think. They need you to su survive first. Yeah, I suppose so. Thank yeah. you very much, Mark.